What's going on everybody and welcome to a video about uh, kind of an overview of the current high-end cloud GPU providers as well as a bit of a tutorial for how to actually make efficient use of these servers so you're not wasting time and money uh, doing like your pre-processing or even data set download or upload to the server which can take a very very long time and just waste like hundreds of dollars. So uh, with that we've got a lot of information to cover let's get into it. So the first thing uh, that we'd want to do is just kind of quickly as quickly as possible compare all these providers. There's so many numbers that you got to think about and look at it can get super confusing. Hopefully I can make it really easy for you. Uh, first of all the every provider has or well, at least most providers have a uh, cluster of GPUs or uh, different GPUs that they offer, but the, the best, the, the flagship GPU that pretty much everyone is offering is the V100, so the Tesla V100 from NVIDIA. This GPU has 16 gigabytes of VRAM per GPU. There is a 32 gigabyte variant, which you can see an example here, um, and I think AWS is the only one offering it. I'm not positive. I'll Take a, I'll try to remember to look as we go through the prices, but you'd have to be spending a lot of money. This is a $30 an hour machine. <laughs> so I don't think many of you guys are looking for that, uh, but it is, I think also AWS has the most GPU VRAM per sing singular machine that you could have. So this is before you might think about doing distributed TensorFlow or PyTorch or whatever, um, which is always a huge mess. So if you want the largest models possible, AWS is still gonna be the victor. But uh, in terms of V100s per V100 GPU, $3.06. You can sign up for one year and three year reserve prices, uh, which lowers it, but you'd be a fool to sign up for a GPU for three years or even probably one year. So I'm not really going to look at those prices. Uh, moving on. So on to uh, Azure, uh, also V100 GPUs. Uh, one thing to start you know, paying a little bit of attention to is, is CPU and RAM. For a lot of deep learning tasks, this might be irrelevant to you. Like you might not actually need very much at all. Like maybe the only thing you're doing is like IO or something like that from like a data set. Uh, but if you're doing something like reinforcement learning, the more VRAM, the better. And often also with reinforcement learning, depending on what sort of environment you're using, the more CPU, the better. Uh, but might not also always be the case that more CPU the better. So, so uh, that is going to be a per use case scenario that I can't possibly dive in for you guys. But basically, Azure is exactly the same price, but they do have different vari variable, vari <laughs> varying amounts of RAM storage and how many cores of CPU. <clears throat> they all vary. So pay attention if 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 any of those things start to matter to you. Pay attention. Uh, moving along, uh, uh, Google Cloud also has the V100, uh, also has, uh, well, actually, they're cheaper. I first, for some reason in my head, I thought they were $3 as well. Uh, $248, I wonder if they were always $248. Anyways, $248 per GPU, so actually cheaper than both AWS and Azure. Um, and uh, they have up to 128 gigabytes. Let me see what uh, they had. Uh, only four times, so... Uh, less, wow, not very many. So actually Azure is kind of losing in, in terms of how much possible. Although I wonder if this, this one's a little more expensive. So what else are we, same amount of RAM, same cores. I wonder if this is your 32 gigabyte variant V100. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, moving on uh, to Paperspace, my longtime favorite cloud GPU provider, simply because you spin it up, it's ready to go. Uh, it's just super simple. Uh, you've got a, a virtual desktop already. It's just super easy <laughs> right, to get going on paper space. Their V100, 230 an hour. So even th this is the cheapest so far. Another reason why I really enjoyed going with them. Also, they offer other GPUs like the P6000, which has 24 gigabytes of GPU memory, which is fun to play with. Uh, so then... Moving along, oh, the one thing that's kind of a downside for paper space, though, is you can only have one GPU per machine. So you're maxing out at either 16 gigabytes of VRAM here or 24 on the P6000, but you can't, com you can't have multiple GPUs per machine. So that's kind of a bummer. Moving on to Linode, which just started uh, their GPU plans. They have 
rather than the V100, the RTX 6000, which is kind of an interesting uh, move. <laughs> Uh, so I, at first I had to take some time to look in what the difference is. So the V100 GPU, obviously 16 gigabytes of VRAM. The RTX 6000 is 24 gigabytes of VRAM, so quite a bit more VRAM. Also, the other thing that matters is how quickly can we process tensors, basically, or arrays. So the V100 has 112 tensor T-flops. The RTX 6000 has 130 tensor T-flops. So more operations per second, more memory for half the price. <laughs> At least of AWS and Azure, it's a little closer to paper space. But again, you can have up to four of these RTX 6000s. So uh, that's a pretty amazing offering, <laughs> to be honest with you. I don't know if they're even, I, you gotta be operating at a loss at this stage. <laughs> but, but, but anyway, Super cool. So this is who we're going to end up using. I do have a referral link for Linode. Sometimes people get a little fidgety when uh, I have referral links. Honestly, I have a relationship with Amazon, Azure, Google, Paperspace, and Linode. All of them. They all want the airtime. Uh, it just so happens that right now, Linode is offering the most absurd deal possible. So we're going to go with Linode. Uh, so that's what I'm going to use. But if you have a different provider, or you're watching this later and someone else has better offer, you can, you can, you can use the same methodology that we're going to use, uh, on any of these providers. So, uh, so hopefully it will still be of use even after maybe Linode is not offering the best deal possible. So, uh, first of all, <clears throat> you'll go ahead and need to create an account, log in, Again, you can use, it's linode.com. If you go to linode.com slash Centex, you should get here and you can just sign up for an account there. You'll get a $20 credit, uh, but I think you actually have to spend $20 and then you'll get your credit. So, so keep that in mind, uh, but you'll still at some point get a $20 credit. <laughs> So, uh, once you do that, uh, let me go ahead and log into my account. You should look at something like this when you get to your dashboard. So, how do we, how do we want to efficiently do this? So, your GPU server is going to be many dollars an hour, as opposed to, like, if we were to look at uh, the other types of servers, we're talking, like, pennies per hour. So, so the first thing we want to do is we want to have, like, a simple, um, a simple virtual private server that is going to uh, serve as our sort of house of data. So at least on Linode, if you go to create, we're going to create a Linode. This is their name for a VPS. So we'll go there. Uh, we want Ubuntu. Uh, for this, we can use 1904, uh, but hopefully I don't forget. <laughs> but we want to use 1804 for at least our GPU server. And in fact, I'll just, I'll just get in the habit. So 18, uh, where is 1804? Here it is. And we want to do that for the long-term support makes updating later down the road much easier. Also, it has long-term support. So, uh, 1804 Ubuntu, uh, pick a region. Uh, in my case, I'm going to go with Dallas, Texas. I haven't checked all the regions, but <clears throat> some actually not Dallas, Texas, because <laughs> Dallas, Texas is a problem. Uh, Newark, New Jersey. So with all of these providers, they don't offer GPUs in the same region like, like they have more regions of like CPU RAM storage than they do have like GPUs at those regions. So some of these places have like 40 locations around the world that you could choose from, but not for GPUs. And so in Linode's case, I happen to know they have GPU instances in Newark, New Jersey. So I'm going to put everything in Newark, New Jersey. So what we're building right now is our like where we're going to store our data. So you could either st have a data storage VPS, you could have a data pre-processing VPS and so on. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, at least on Linode, the, the thing that makes the most sense would be to do your storage and pre-processing probably on the same machine. Uh, but we'll talk about that oh, maybe later if I, if I remember. But for now, we're, I'm just going to go with a standard Linode, this two gigabyte. You could even go with a Nanode for even cheaper. But I, I, I kind of uh, don't like one gigabyte of, of memory because sometimes that's not even enough to install certain packages. So I'm going to go with this one. <laughs> um, and then we'll come down here. I'm going to call this uh, data server. Uh, and then we're going to make a password, uh, jellyfish. It's a great password. 
and you might want to think about backups. I've never regretted having backups, but this is just a quick machine uh, that I'm just using for an example. So I think we're ready. So we're going to go ahead and spin this one up. So again, uh, if you're following along, I, I would strongly recommend you, you probably use Newark, New Jersey, and then later you can look for regions that are maybe closer to you, although it shouldn't really matter where it is <laughs> for, for cloud GPU stuff. I don't think it matters. Um, <clears throat> unless you're uploading the data set from your local machine, maybe, but either way, it's not going to cost you very much money in this case, because this is a $10 a month, um, server as opposed to, you know, $1.50 is $1.50 times 24. Uh, so, you know, you're paying more than that per day, <laughs> more than double that per day. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and create. Did I forget something? <sighs> Do I need a puncture? Uh, how about capital jelly... F <laughs> Jellyfish exclamation mark. What do you think about that? Is that a good password? If I forget to um, <laughs> destroy this machine, someone remind me. Because <laughs> you all know now know the password to my lovely IP address right here. Uh, okay, so we're going to wait for this to set up. Um... So basically what this is going to do is we're going to have a volume that we're going to attach to the server. And again, this is a, this is a concept that exists uh, definitely on AWS, definitely on uh, Google Cloud. I haven't used Azure to any serious degree, but I'm willing to bet they do it too. Basically, all these providers have this sort of uh, structure where you've got your, you know, your, yes, you can have a VPS, but you can also spin up totally separate storage container type things. Um, because often you need more storage than you need on that is available on some of these like just kind of prepackaged virtual private servers. So uh, did I get lost? Okay, so this looks like it's good to go. Here's your IP address. We can copy that. And um, I actually don't think we need to log in just yet. The other thing, the next thing that we want to do is we want to have storage. Like in this case, I'm actually not going to need more than 50 gigabytes of storage. If you don't need more than 50 gigabytes of storage, then you don't have to do the next step, right? And you could also spin up, like, as you go bigger on your Linodes, you'll get more storage in the Linode. Also, your GPU machine probably has a pretty hefty amount of storage. But that machine, we just want to spin it up and use it as quickly as possible. So we don't want, we, we're trying to avoid the download or upload of a data set to that machine. So that machine has to be on and you're being billed. So long as those machines exist, whether it's on AWS, Azure, Google, if those machines ex exist, you're getting billed for them. So even if you turn them off, that GPU is still being dedicated to you and you're still paying $1.50 an hour or $3 an hour or $30 an hour. <laughs> So you want to use it as quickly as possible. <clears throat> so, so we've got our data server. Uh, I believe it's probably online. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to volumes and we're going to add a volume. I'm going to call this uh, ML storage. Size 20 is fine. Again, this is uh, this is just an example. But you know you'd probably want like a terabyte or like 10 terabytes or so. How freaking big did I go? Oh, a thousand gigabytes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you probably don't want to 10 terabytes. That's a lot of money per month. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> you, you know, you might want 500 gigabytes or something reasonable. Anyway, um, you also could, in theory, have your storage on some other provider. But part of what we're trying to do is we want to have our volume and our data source. We want to have that in the exact same region. So when we go to transfer that data, it has the fastest transfer rate possible. So hopefully you can upload and download data at 100 plus megabytes per second. If if it's like from your local machine, you might only get like five or 15 or something terrible and it's going to take forever. So we're trying to get this to be as quick as possible. Um, and at least here, there's an even better method that I'll show you guys uh, near the end. But we'll go with 100. Uh, region, again, we're going to go with Newark, New Jersey. Uh, we can just automatically select a Linode. You can change this later. But I'm going to say data server because that makes sense. Um, I don't really care about tag. Um, I don't even think you have to do it. So let's go ahead and hit submit there. And we should get our volume. So now what we want to do is we need to run these commands. And uh, I guess I'll just make another window here. Linode.com. Go log in. <clears throat> 
What I want is, so there's our volume, click on the server, I'm trying to get our IP. So here's our IP address, boop. So now, uh, coming over to either if you're on uh, Mac or Linux, just open your terminal. If you're on Windows, either download a program called Putty, or I'm using Bash on Ubuntu on Windows. You can go to like the App Store, I think, and get it, or you just enable it. I don't even know. It might even be there by default now. I, I honestly do not know. Um, I just know I have it, and it's, it makes it easier uh, to do stuff like this. So, uh, again, use whatever. Uh, <laughs> there's a million options for Windows, basically, but if you're on Mac or Linux, just open Terminal. Uh, if you're on Windows and you're having a problem with, with this step, uh, feel free to either post a comment below or join us on Discord. That's discord.gg slash syntax. We can definitely help you out. Or go to the text-based version of the tutorial. Uh, there's instructions there. So uh, we're going to SSH root at, uh, can't pay, there we go, right-click to paste it in, that address. Uh, and then the first time you connect, you're going to get a message like this. Basically, it's just like, hey, uh, we've never seen this fingerprint before, so if this is the first time you're connecting to that server, then this is totally fine. If you don't think this is the first time you've connected to that IP address, uh, something is wrong. <laughs> this should be a red flag. But for now, yes is correct. <clears throat> cool. Uh, now the password, capital jellyfish, exclamation mark. See if we can get in. Hopefully I didn't type with that. Oh my goodness. What if I don't get in? Maybe, okay, it just took a second. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no. Uh, okay. So now uh, what we want to do is we want to run these, at least these three commands. And then we could also add this um, as well. This is a little less essential. Uh, so first, the, this command here actually makes the file system um, on the actual volume itself. Because we've attached this volume to this uh, uh, Linode, let's call it. Uh, so first we want to make a file system on that volume. So it's almost, it's like it's its own drive right now, right? And so first we're going to add that. So I'm going to come over here and just right click, uh, boop, done. And uh, if I forget to, uh, cool, okay. And if I forget to say it later, <clears throat> um, we're going to, I'm going to show you guys two methods for kind of moving your data around. And this is a command you would only want to run one time <laughs> per volume. Just remember that. Okay, so then this one, make dirt. So now that we've got the storage um, or the file system on that volume, uh, here we're just going to make a directory uh, for how we, where we want to access that storage on our actual machine here. So I'm going to just copy paste that in, makes that directory. And then now we want to basically mount that volume to that directory. So now copy paste again so it's just like pointing this location to this location so now our data server has access to all that 20 gigabytes of storage <laughs> or 500 or 10,000 or whatever so cool so now that we have uh, that done we also could you could just nano um, FS tab here uh, here so whoa so nano uh, fs, or actually it was uh, etc fs tab or fs tab, whatever you want to call it. Uh, come down here, uh, paste that in. Uh, let me confirm that. Cool. Yeah. All set. Control X. Yes to save. Enter. Done. So now if, if you reboot this machine or whatever, this will always be there for you. So, um, so now we have the storage and we can get there by just doing change directory into mount ml storage. And there we are. Now, uh, let me move this aside. And in fact, um, hmm, how do I want to do this? The next thing we want is the, uh, I guess we could Google it. I bet I could find it that way. We're gonna, we just need a data set just to kind of show you guys how it works. Cats vs. Dogs Microsoft. <laughs> I'm sure I can find it, yes. Okay, so click on that, uh, and then here's your download. Uh, I think this will take us, yeah, to a new page. And actually what I wanna do is right-click this, uh, copy link address, and then I'm gonna come over here, 
And inside of mount ML storage, what we're gonna run is, uh, you can't see that. Here, uh, we're gonna say w get. Oh, really? I'm pretty sure I copied that. Let me try that one more time. Uh, copy link address, come over here, boop. Cool, so that will download again to our data server. So hopefully here you can see, yes, yeah, even here, we're getting about, I don't know, 30, 40 megabytes a second. Megabits a second, anyway. <laughs> so feel free to correct me. <clears throat> so now, once that's done, we basically have this data set on our, um, our server. Now, the next thing we could do is we can either, uh, we, we could keep it in zip form or we could like unzip it. And so I think I'm actually just gonna unzip it. I always forget the tar xf command to do that. So instead what we're gonna say is sudo apt get install unzip. <clears throat> Wait for that. Any day now. Ba -da. I guess while we wait on that, shouts out to the uh, following channel members. Let me boop that over. Cool. Uh, one year, Thiago Lima, Rodrigo Silva, Abajit. Thank you guys for one year of membership. It's a very long time. Omni Crux, Miguel Latoro, Parada, and Haoyan Guo. Six months of membership. You guys are amazing. Okay, we've got our uh, unzip. So now we want to hopefully over here, uh, unzip Kaggle cats and dogs. Very good. Uh, wow, this could take a while. <clears throat> okay, well, while we wait on that, uh, I'm trying to decide. So the next thing that we're going to do is once we have this, this is in theory our data set. Like we're pretty much done. We're just going to wait. I wish I could remember if this started on cats or started on dogs. I guess we'll find out. I think it's about 12,000 images per thing. Oh, we're done. Okay, let me make sure that, that worked as intended. I cannot read that. This says pet images, and then I have no idea what's supposed to be here. I've, I've picked a, a poor color scheme. <laughs> so, okay, <clears throat> so we've got basically this directory that is, uh, it looks, it's pet images like that. That's what contains basically all of our training data. So now, see all this time that we've spent, luckily this didn't take too long. This isn't actually a very large data set, right? I think it's like 400 megabytes or something. The typical data set that you're gonna actually do deep learning on though is often like 50 gigabytes or 500 gigabytes, right? <clears throat> it takes a very long time to get that data to your server. Uh, either through downloading or even worse, if you have to upload that data, almost everyone has a pretty, at least in the United States, other parts of the world are blessed and then other parts of the world aren't blessed. <laughs> they don't have any internet. So, so depending on where you live, this might vary for you. But in general, I find my upload rate is terrible and it really is very painful as I upload to a server that I'm paying many dollars an hour for. So anyway, we have all of our data and it's on the data VPS. So now what we want to do is we can actually spin up our uh, GPU server. So I'll come over here. Um, okay, uh, we're going to actually go to stack scripts and then community stack scripts. And then probably if you just type Centex, you'll find it maybe. Yes, so what we want is the Centex TensorFlow GPU and PyTorch setup. Now, like I said, uh, first let me do this. Okay, first we'll click on it. Like I said, you can do this on any of the providers. You don't have to use Linode, but you should, because right now they're the best. But um, this basically, it's it's called a stack script on Linode, and stack scripts on Linode are basically shell scripts with a little bit of UI and variables involved, okay? with And that's it. Uh, and this stack script is truly a shell script that you could run. Uh, there's no like ten or there's no Linode variables being passed here. So if you go to the text-based version of the tutorial, you you literally can just copy and paste this. It's a shell script, and then whenever you get onto your server, um, you would first just chmod plus x the name of the script, uh, and then you would just run it with period slash, and then you know script.sh. Okay, simple. Uh, again. If you're having trouble with that, you don't really understand any of that, 
uh, come to discord.gg slash syntax and we'd be happy to help you out. So, uh, so anyways, coming back over here, uh, it's just convenient on Linode that we can just save this. And it's kind of like, like on paper space, you can just spin up the machine. It's ready to go because again, setting up TensorFlow can take a while because you got to get CUDNN, CUDA Toolkit. You've got to get uh, TensorFlow GPU. You've got to get every, all the other dependencies. Uh, you're going to need to get uh, I think Python 3.6 is now the default on Linux or on Linux, on Ubuntu, but probably should be on 3.7. Um, at least that's what I would prefer to be on. So, you know, getting that all set up, getting pip, getting just, there's so many things you got to get. <laughs> so you just wasted a bunch of time and it's not only the server time, it's your time as well. So anyways, this will just automatically do all of it for you. So uh, I'm going to say deploy new Linode. From this stack script, you also could have clicked those like little three dots, but this is what I'm going to do. Uh, it's already selected Ubuntu 18.04 for us. Again, region, uh, do Newark, New Jersey. If you do another region, you might see something. So let me just say, uh, well, I'll just say Newark, New Jersey for now, and I'll try to remember to switch it. But then come down to Linode plan, choose GPU. Uh, I'm going to go with the the $1,000 a month option, uh, but you could use the other ones um, if, you, if you have something that needs that much. Uh, Linode label, I'm going to say RTX 6000 GPU. Uh, password, jellyfish, exclamation mark. Um, <laughs> please don't forget about that. Uh, <laughs> coming over here, uh, what else do we need? I think we're good to go. So the only other thing I want to show you guys is if I was to select Dallas, Texas, which I have tried before, and I click create, if this works, I'm going to be mad, but I don't think it will. Yes, you'll get this, this little warning here. It says you are not authorized to take this action. What they mean to say is we don't have any GPUs there. So anyway, coming back to Newark, New Jersey, they do have GPUs there, although if, if enough people follow this tutorial on release, they might not. <laughs> so careful. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> uh, Newark, New Jersey. Cool. I think we're good to go. Again, you could do backups, but $40 a month is pretty expensive. Uh, and our methodology will kind of have almost backups fully created. You would just need to do a couple of basic things and you'd have your own backups. So yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to do that. Uh, create. Hope that's good. Uh, the Linode GPUs are billed, I want to say, um, prorated to the hour. So some places are prorated to the second, which is like AWS will prorate your bill. So if you use 30 seconds on Linode, you will be billed for an hour. So $1.50, let's say. Whereas on Amazon, if you use 30 seconds, you would be billed for whatever, $1.50, or actually $3.06. Um, and 30 seconds of... $3.06 an hour. You do the math. <laughs> okay. So, uh, currently our server is spinning up. It's busy. It's got a, it's, there's actually quite a few things that it needs to do. Um, because first it has to spin up, get allocated everything. Uh, and then it actually has to run the stack script. So even though we don't have to run this, that anymore, uh, it still does have to run and actually set things up. So things are getting downloaded and stuff like that. Uh, so I actually don't, remember exactly how long this will take. So probably what I'll do is pause the video for now and then see, I, it does say booting, but it will first boot, then run the stack script and then reboot. So it could take, it could take a little bit. So we'll see. Um, let me think here. We could connect to it has been created, booted. I just know it, it can't possibly be ready. It'll have to reboot after the stack script runs. Anyway, I'm gonna pause for now and then pick back up once uh, I'm confident the machine is ready. So I'll just test to make sure TensorFlow is, is up uh, and all that. Okay, and we are back. It has uh, finally rebooted. I, I just, I knew that it would reboot at the end of that stack script. So I was just kind of waiting for the reboot. I, it took 10 minutes. Uh, honestly, to set up all that stuff myself, I usually, take about 30 to 45 minutes because you have to download like CUDNN, the CUDA toolkit, drivers, uh, all the other things. And then I usually end up forgetting certain dependencies when I go to run my scripts for the first time. It takes me a really long time. So 10 minutes is really good. You just start it, you walk away, it's all good. So anyways, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, you'll have to wait 10 minutes if you're following along. Otherwise you're good to go. So uh, now here is a fresh Ubuntu, bash on Ubuntu 
bash on... I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> coming over to Linux, uh, what I want is my IP address for the GPU server. I want to make sure everything worked. So SSH root at that IP. I've already connected once, but otherwise you, you'll see that same warning as before because it's your first time connecting. Uh, password, uh, what did I say? Jellyfish, jellyfish. Don't forget to nuke. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is check Python 3.7. That does indeed open uh, Python for me. Let's make sure we're on view for everybody. And import TensorFlow as TF. Uh, despite future warnings, <laughs> It does work, uh, and you can ignore these. These are just, uh, you, you have, NumPy is involved with uh, TensorFlow, as you might expect, and there are certain things that are going to have to change before uh, uh, the next update to NumPy, which will eventually deprecate uh, certain things that TensorFlow is using of NumPy, but right now it's totally fine, and don't worry, it will be fine in the future. Uh, as of Python 3.7, various deprecation and future warnings are much more visible than they ever were before, uh, which I, I kind of, I don't know how I feel about that, but anyway, that's why you, you probably, if you've been using 3.7, you're seeing more of these deprecation warnings than you've ever seen before. Anyway, looks like it works. Now we want to test it, uh, but we first we need some data. Also, our data is not on the server yet, right? So, <clears throat> the first thing that we're going to do is, uh, I guess I'll just make dir and then forward slash uh, deep learning cools, and then we'll change directory into deep learning cool. And now we want our data. So, I'm going to use secure copy and paste to move our data set from here to our machine. Now, this is one of two methods that you can use. Um, I'm going to use this method first because this method will always work. And then I'll show you the method that I would use anywhere you have this movable volume like we have right now uh, on Linode because <clears throat> it'll make way more sense. Uh, but for now, uh, we're currently in this uh, on the data server, which has currently the volume is mounted to it. We have our zip file, which extracted to pet images, which is, I'm sorry about the colors, uh, but anyways, pet images is there. And now what we want to do, I swear I've already muted this, uh, now what we want to do is uh, move pet images to our uh, GPU server. And the way that we're going to do that is with SCP. So, uh, let me pull up, yeah. So, to do SCP, you'll start with SCP, and then what do we want to move? We want to move pet images, but because pet, if it was just Kaggle, cats and dogs, you would just say SCP this. Really? Oh, it just took a second. Yeah, hit tab. You can hit tab and it auto-completes, uh, but it was taking a while. Anyway, <clears throat> so SCP, so you could, if it's just a single, like, zipped up file, you can do that. But I actually want to move this directory that we extracted to save time. So I'm actually going to say scp-r for recursive pet images. And now we're going to scp that entire directory. And then where do we want to scp it to? We want to scp it to the root at then the IP address for our... Uh, can I get it with this possibly? Is it here? Yes, right here. For our GPU server... So copy, come over here, root at 45, 79, okay, cool. Uh, at that address, colon, and then the location on that server. So the location was like deep learning or something. Uh, let me break, PWD. So just slash deep learning, yes. PWD is print working directory, but also it set it right here. Anyway, <laughs> so just slash deep learning, slash deep learning, cool. I don't think you would need that trailing slash, but I'm going to throw it in there. S -E -B -R -P -E. Cool. I'll hit enter. Hopefully this goes. Uh, again, this is the first time that the data server has connected to the uh, GPU server. So again, we get the same little fingerprint warning thing. Yes. Uh, password, jellyfish. And now we wait for this. all these things to transfer. This operation, uh, it would be, it would have been... It's qu questionable which would have been quicker, actually, to do. And I also wonder if SCP has a distributed option, because that would also be much quicker. This is going to take quite a while, actually. This is going... 
this would not be the most efficient. It would be more efficient to move the zip file, which I think took 30 or 40 seconds to download. We'll move that one at the end of this as well because I think that'll be kind of a curious uh, thing. <laughs> it's still going. Uh, the extraction was definitely quicker. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just break that. Just control C to break it. Uh, I'm going to come over to our GPU server. I'm going to do LS. There's pet images. I'm going to RM-R for recursive pet images. See you later, freak. And instead, what we're going to do is rather than SCP recursively, which will be useful if you're training, like if, especially if you're trying to move the information from your GPU server, like you want to move model files, log files, other things back, you still want to know the, the SCP recursive, but that is taking way too long. So instead, what we want to do is uh, let's do SCP. Uh, and in fact, let me just do, can I just do this? And then rather than pet images, let's SCP, and then we'll just move Kaggle cats and dogs dot zip to the same location. Now this should go quite quickly, hopefully. Even now it's a 30 megabytes a second. It's terrible. I wonder if I didn't do, I'm pretty sure both of these are in the exact, uh, this should be way quicker. It should be way quicker. Um, both of these are in Newark, New Jersey. Our volume, it gets attached, but it's also in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, these are not typical numbers that you would see. It's going so slow. I can't decide if it's going so slow because of our previous trend. Like, it might be like a firewall issue. <laughs> like, we should be getting 100 at least. I'm curious, if anyone else is following along, post below what number you're seeing, especially if you don't do this initial, <laughs> this initial thing. But uh, this, it's gotta be a firewall or something. Um, I've done this quite a few times. And usually when you're transferring locally like that, cause it's, it's from in, in the same region. So they should all be on the same network. So we should be getting somewhere between 100 and 300 like megabits a second. Like it, this should not take so long. So that's, that's kind of a bummer. Megabits or megabyte? Someone correct me there. Um, dang it. That's too bad. That took a while. That really did. Um, luckily, I have an even better solution for you. <laughs> but first, let's finish up the SCP version. Because even I can't, I still can't upload data at a solid 12 megabits a second or megabytes a second. Uh, so many people are going to be like, it's this, idiot. Uh, okay, so now... This is our data server. See you later, freak. Now we have the zip file, which again, we're gonna have sudo apt get install unzip, <clears throat> and then we'll unzip it much quicker than that. Now though, I do wonder, let's do unzip kaggle. I do wonder if, I, I just wonder if we were throttled kind of before we started moving that data or if there's some sort of network issue right now, or what, because that's just a, that's a terrible local transfer rate. Anyway, that's already done, so cool. So now uh, we have that directory. The next thing I want us to do is, I will post a link in the description. Basically, this is the text-based version of this tutorial. Uh, if we scroll down to here, we get a just a quick example script that will run. Uh, it's just gonna, train this model basically. So coming over to my bash on Ubuntu on Windows on Linux on Mac OS. Oh dear. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. <laughs> uh, we want to nano ml example dot pi and then right click in there. And this is just our quick script. Um, I, I don't really think I need to explain it, but basically it's just going to uh, do some of the pre-processing. Again, this is something you might want to actually do on like a pre-processing um, server rather than on your GPU server that you're paying a bunch of money for, but it does just so happen to be the case that your GPU server has a lot of pa processing power. So I'll let you make that decision, but for now we'll just run it here. But the same thing applies, you could just SCP, um, you know, run the pre-processing, then SCP it over. I promise the SCP rate uh, should not normally be 11.2 um, MBs per second. 
Uh, so anyway, uh, control X, yes to save, cool. Then we can just run Python 3.7 mlexample.py, which again, will run the pre-processing step first. Uh, so that could take a little bit. I, I don't even remember how well I, uh, Okay, so first we're printing out some of the errors. So for whatever reason in this training data set, some of the images kind of like don't actually load for some reason. So anyway, what you're seeing right now for the errors is just right here. For some reason, we're unable to read it with uh, OpenCV. Uh, I probably should have used TQDM or something uh, to show where we were in the process. That would have been smart, huh? But we can, we can see at least where we are in dogs, although it's, ah, it's out of order. That's weird. Okay, I think we're, yeah, okay, so we're now we're, I can see we're loading things, so let me move this over. <laughs> so this is training our model for a few epochs. And <laughs> is exceptionally fast. This is hilariously fast. Just in case you've never trained this model, I highly encourage you to take this exact code and train it locally. Um, okay, so we trained a cats versus dog model. The accuracy, in sample accuracy is 91. The validation accuracy is 74, basically. So we definitely overfit, but we weren't really trying to do anything special. We just wanted to run it. Um, but uh, that's insanely fast. <laughs> uh, to do a two-second epoch, to, for some reason, when I wrote this script locally, I was getting like 24-second epochs, which is very odd because I run an RTX... Titan GPU, which has the exact same tensor T flops and uh, the same, no, more, same or more, same, same VRAM, 24, yeah, I think it's the same VRAM. So, anyway, uh, not sure why it was so lightning fast on Linode, but um, <clears throat> definitely curious to dig more into that because this GPU is very comparable to the GPUs on paper space so it's not like this gpu is like super slow like it, it's about it's a little faster than the v100 so uh i don't know why these are so fast but, <laughs> but anyway i'd love to look more into that and also if you want to see me compare this rtx 6000 to a v100 like on paper space uh let me know the other thing i, I wouldn't mind checking at some point is many so the v100 was meant to be a server GPU that you would just have a bunch of. So I do wonder if four RTX 6000s still significantly outperform four V100s. But that's a very expensive test, so depending on how many people really want to see that, uh, let me know <laughs> because I'm curious, but it's also expensive. So we'll see. Anyway, so that's that. That is basically the entire workflow that should work everywhere. Now, because of what you just saw with that SCP delay and all that, sometimes these things can take a while to uh, to transfer for who knows why. I'm going to wager... I don't know. I just don't think an SCP should have pit, uh, hit any sort of firewall or something. I, I don't know what's going on there. Maybe the, something else... You're, you're sharing the network with people, so maybe the network's just under super heavy load. I don't know. Uh, it should be faster than that, though, to be honest. Um... Okay, so the other thing that I would show is, at least on Linode and other places that have these like separate volumes like this, uh, one thing you can do is detach and retach pretty quickly, and that is the case on Linode. So, rather than doing all the SCP nonsense, you can have an ML, ML storage, right, uh, that first you've attached it to your data server, you do your pre-processing, so in this case, let's call extracting pre-processing, uh, and then we can attach it to our GPU server. So actually what, we, what I'm going to do is I'm going to CD out of the deep learning directory and then, okay, I'm going to RMR deep learning. See you later, freak. And now what I'm going to do <clears throat> is uh, come over here and mm, it would probably be wise to sudo shut down minus h now and i'm going to shut down this server as well sudo shut down minus h now uh because we're going to move the volume and if we move the volume while the server is on we could uh, like at least right now I, i'm under the impression that i have like nothing is modifying that volume but 
you might make the mistake one day and then that volume gets corrupted or whatever. And if you don't have backups, you're going to be really sad. So just go ahead and shut them both off. And then <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over here. I'm going to wait until this says that they're offline. Okay. Uh, we're going to come to the volumes. And then what I'm going to do is click this little arrow here. And I'm going to say detach. So currently ML storage has all that training data already on it. So now I'm going to detach it from um, from that, that data server, but the data is still going to be on this volume. So detach, and then we'll wait for that to get detached. It should be pretty quick. Okay, <clears throat> now we want to attach, and we're going to attach it to our GPU server. Save. Now, once it's attached, we want, we have to like re kind of sort of set it up, but don't run that first command. <laughs> because you will recreate the file storage and you'll basically just kind of like overwrite it because it's the exact same command. So if we go show configuration, don't run that command. This is the one we want to run. So uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down, whoops, doo, 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 uh, and reconnect again to our GPU server. Uh, jellyfish. And we're going to run... Uh, this command here, boop, and then the second command here. I'm not going to run the other command uh, just to save time, but you can run that as well. If you, to do the, I'm going to call it f stab. Uh, okay, so now the ML storage is there. So if we change directory into mount, oops, uh, forward slash mount ML storage. And then we list out that directory. Guess what? There's our pet images. So now what we could do is we could train a model, save the model, right, to this, this storage here. And then, again, uh, what we would do is we'd come over here. Once we're done, once the, the, the model and logs and all that is saved to our ML storage volume, click here. <laughs> Don't click on that one. <laughs> uh, detach. I cracked myself up. Uh, and then you'd move it back to uh, your, your, uh, you know, your data VPS, right? To do you know, your pre-processing or just to store it. Uh, so then you go over to your Linodes and actually, oh yeah, I just like tripped myself out there because I was like, hmm, I never booted back up those servers. <laughs> but <clears throat> whenever you attach the attach or detach, it runs a reboot sequence. So I removed it from data server, so it rebooted data server after it was removed. And then the uh, GPU server, when I attached it, it booted the GPU server. But for a second there, I was like, wait, I never turned it back on. Anyway, um, okay. So now what I wanna do is, before I forget, uh, actually, I wanna turn both of these guys off. Uh, power off, power off, and power off. But basically, at the end of your training a model, you would detach that volume, power off the GPU server, and nuke it. So basically, you spent 10 minutes really spinning it up, setting it up, and then the attaching and detaching of the volume is nearly instant. It's pretty quick. Uh, or you can use SCP, which is variable. That's not the first time, and it's not just Linode, that's not the first time uh, SCP has been quite slow for me, even locally. So sometimes it can really bite you in the butt and that kind of sucks. But anyway, at least on Linode, that's how you can even avoid that. You just simply detach, attach the entire volume. Uh, and yeah. So, okay, that was a ton of information. Hopefully you guys have learned something useful. If you want GPUs in the cloud, at least right now, Linode is the place to go. Again, if you haven't created an account up to this point, <laughs> you can sign up for Linode and get a $20 credit by linode.com slash Centex. Uh, questions, comments, concerns, whatever, feel free to leave those below. If you have also, you can join the Discord. That's discord.gg slash Centex if you've got questions that you want answered in there as well. So anyway... That's all for now. Uh, I'll see you guys in another video.